stories about the bright side of education. Somos Sunny Side. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Somos Sunnyside. I'm your host, uh, the superintendent here of Sunnyside Unified School District, Jose Gastelum. And I got another special guest here today. We have Elizabeth Liz Soltero. She is the CEO for, of the Sunnyside Foundation. So welcome, Ms. Soltero. How are you doing this morning? Thank you, Mr. Gastelum, for having me. And um, Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, Happy New Year. Welcome back. I want to give a shout out to our, our Sunnyside employees and our students and families. Hopefully, they all had a very restful and enjoyable winter break. And they're, they're uh, rejuvenated to come back and have a strong 2024 school year. And um, can't wait to, to talk to some of the folks here in the community and see how their winter break went. And, and just really ready to hit second semester full force. You know, it's a second semester is always filled with a bunch of different activities and events. Uh, you know, the culminating activity there is graduation. So May 2024, we're looking forward to some some great graduations from all three of our high schools, Star Academic, Sunnyside High School, and Desert High School. And so the other neat thing is just students, you know, earning awards at the end of the year, you know, this piece of, of scholarships, and you start finding out where, where students are headed and, and their hard work that has paid off, right, in terms of you know, they put all this work in the four years of high school and they're told every day, every week, grades matter, GPA matters, you know, stay in the game. And, um, you know, and now they're, they're going to be reaping the benefits of it. So we just can't wait, you know, to kick off second semester. And I know we got a, a few months to go, but, you know, just excited about that. Um, on another note, I, I want to recognize you, Ms. Soltero, for being 40 Under 40 recipient. Uh, I got to attend that breakfast last month, that event last month, and that's just a, it's just a, a, a really nice recognition for everything you do. And, and so tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And, you know, thank you to, to your team for being so welcoming and celebrating alongside me and, and, and the foundation and, and what we've been doing. Um, that was a really, you know, nice experience. I am, you know, not used to recognition. Sometimes we do what we do because we love what we do. And um, it was a special opportunity that I got to share uh, with my mom and, and my son, Noah, um, as you all got to, you know, host them there with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the time with Noah. He kept me busy. <laughs> and he was he was locked in on those games, but he didn't he didn't miss your, your walking up to the stage and, and getting your award. So... Yeah, and he was. I love the way he was dressed in his little sport coat. So her her ten year old son looked just sharp. Yeah, no. That so he yeah he let me know. He sent me a message um, that he appreciated the, you know the video and they were excited and you know that um, recognition just you know helped fill up my cup some more um, to celebrate with everyone and just keep doing keep doing yeah. some work. Well, it's well deserved. Um, you. you know, for the work that you do for the Sunnyside community and just in the Tucson community. Um, you know, it's very obvious that you have a, a passion to serve others and you have a passion to help young people and, and, and educators, you know, just that passion for education. And, and you guys have been just a, a great partner, um, you know, ever since, uh, you know, the Sunnyside Foundation and the, and the Sunnyside Unified School District have partnered. And so tell us a little bit about what is the Sunnyside Foundation? I think people sometimes um, get it a little confused. They think it's, it's, it's part of the district, you know, all the way it works hand in hand with the district, you know, it's a separate entity. So tell us a little bit about what is the Sunnyside Foundation? Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a quick recap of the history because I feel like that, that helps, you know, ground me and ground us in this conversation. The Sunnyside Foundation was founded back in the um, early 1990s and it was founded by a group of amazing alumni from the district um, who were really like took charge and care that hey we need to invest back into our students and education in the Sunnyside Unif Unified School District and so we began back then and we started on a like legacy our legacy program is many grants to educators and, and staff in the district um, to support with you know various areas. It's changed over the years. Um, currently, it's STEM and health and wellness for students and literacy and arts and culture. Um, but that's where it began, and then it has um, always been upheld by 
by our, our community here in Sunnyside Unified School District, but also Southside wide um, from our families and everybody that volunteers their time, whether ideas, money, um, and it's grown. So it's, it's grown. Um, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of things shifted. And I always want to just highlight this as a milestone because at that time, community was saying, hey, there's a lot more needs. And we we know that our students need the support in the classroom, but there's some things going on outside the classroom at homes. And so um, we can share a little bit about that later, but we know we've grown into education, uh, focusing on community share as a program to support our, our teachers throughout the year professional development, mini grants continue. We've been on a path to support dual enrollment at Sunnyside High School and Biotech. Um, we uh, are, are looking at CTE and some of the programming there mm -hmm. and how we mm -hmm. can just support and fill in some of the gaps um, with what the wonderful work that the teachers are doing. And then most recently, the Sunnyside Alumni Association um, came under the foundation and we're doing scholarships, um, post-secondary scholarships for graduating seniors in the district. That's that's amazing. I mean, it's it's like you're sprinkling the donations everywhere, right? You know, in terms of just just helping out, and you know, I I, I do remember during the pandemic, you know, you guys expanded to helping families out, um, you know, food drives, helping them out with just bills and different things like that. You know, it was tough times for a lot of individuals, and so, you know, it's neat that you guys are in the community. And, you know, and helping the community, you know, not only all our educators and students, but just the greater community in terms of their needs, you know. Um, so you've been in this role now for, what, two years? Is this two years? two years? Almost yeah, two April, years. Almost two years. And, you know, I'm, I'm jealous of the title CEO, right? I mean, it's it's a, it's always a, a it's a nice title. It's, it's you know, you're you're in charge here. And, and um, the thing I love about it is, is you know, you have a, a Latina woman CEO in our community. And uh, I don't know if Latina is the correct word now. Now it's Latinx, it's <laughs> Latina, it's Hispano. I mean, Chicana. Chicana, <laughs> right? I mean, so, you know, I think what we all can agree on is, is you know, you're a great role model for our young women in the community. And so, you know, I, I love that piece because, you know, it, it, it really inspires our, our listeners. Our, and I hope that we have more students listening and more young young people listening as well, uh, you know, to, to, you know, give them inspiration that they can become CEOs in this community in whatever field they, they choose to be. And so, um, you know, you hit the ground running. I, I remember when you first, uh, you know, were announced of, of getting the, this, this uh, position, um, you right away started contacting us and, and started talking about, you know, how, how, you know, what are some of the things we can work on together to, to improve the experience, you know, and I always talk about the student experience to me it's it, that is probably the most important piece you know for our students are they having a great experience through our school system pre-k through 12 you know experience and um are we providing them these opportunities you know to be to be successful and to move forward and and so you know i'd like to think that we're headed in that direction i mean I, as i said you know i want to talk a little bit about your upbringing mm -hmm. and you know what what chose you to get into this line of work as well right because yeah. you know i don't think you wake up you know and say well i want to do this or i want to do that i think you you learn to grow a passion for things and um you know, I think from there we, we, we kind of make our moves, right? So tell us a little bit about your, your upbringing, your education, your work experience, and why you got into this line of work. Yeah, no. Um, so I, I've grown up here on the south and, and west sides of town, um, mostly through TUSD. Um, then into, Don't say that too I know, loud, I won't okay? say it too no, loud. Right. I'm only kidding, I'm only <laughs> my, my heart's here. You're still south sider. You're still yeah. south sider. <laughs> so I, you know, I... I definitely bring with me, um, you know, my parents, right? We represent our parents and our family. Uh, my mom immigrated from um, Mexico, from Hermosillo as a young child and just has like worked intensely hard um, and um, has shown me, you know, what hard work really means. And my father went, you know, was a Vietnam vet and um, attempted to go to the U of A and went up through junior high and was like, this isn't, this isn't for me. I'm not welcomed. I'm not like excelling here. Yeah. And he, he didn't finish his degree. So I went through Pima with a lot of support from, um, counselors. I, um, 
transferred to the U of A through a transition program that thankfully, like they literally walked me into the mm -hmm. bookstore. They helped me register wow. for classes. That was the kind of support that I needed mm -hmm. to figure out how to navigate that place. And so, um, you know, when I went to U, U of A, I, I found home at the then Chicano Hispano Center, and um, that was my home away from home. Mm -hmm. That's where I got plugged in and um, got politically activated and yeah, charged, yeah. and and then focusing on Mexican American studies. That was my undergrad, and mm -hmm. then I went on to become a librarian. I got my master's in library mm -hmm. science, and you hear I, that, principals? We got a <laughs> certified, qualified <laughs> librarian out here, Always. and, and uh, That's my so heart if there's a right need for too. one, uh, <laughs> so. You, you so yeah, I you know it took a lot of support from professors, from friends and family, um, just rooting me on and figuring out how to navigate that. And so um, once I graduated, I um, entered into my profession, found myself you know in, in public libraries and serving our, our Southside libraries and Central and doing outreach and getting to work with teachers and mm -hmm. students all the time and families. And so. Um, life brought me back to be the director of the the then chicano hispano center it's called the guerrero center and really found a love around supporting students socially emotionally and academically and seeing how important it is for especially like our latinx or mexican american students any students that were marginalized or underrepresented and that like ignited a lot of passion you know so education's always been there at my heart and um you know went on to do a stint in city government learned a lot about our city and um how to navigate that and then this opportunity came up and i, I actually um you know learned about the foundation through the work of the emergency relief fund then ed carry um a lopez howell and found out like we worked together to figure out how to get some of that relief support out to our families with a, 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 a bunch of wonderful grassroots organizations and council member Santa Cruz and the mayor. Um, and I was like, this is uh, amazing work. <laughs> like yeah. this is, you know, they're supporting education and doing emergency relief, not really the typical foundation we do direct service, but that's because it was needed. And so I really got excited and drawn to the foundation because I thought it was being super responsive and doing it from a like, culturally respectful, like strength based lens to like uplift our families. And so I'm just, I'm all about it, you know? Absolutely. I love that word uplift, you know, and, and, because that's, sometimes that's all we need, right? We need somebody to just uplift us a little bit, believe in us, and, and we, you know, it takes off from there. You know, you hit on some very, very important uh, pieces here. You know, obviously, I love this piece of, of uh, you know, humble beginnings, right? Because I think a, a lot of us and a lot of our, our employees, a lot of our students can relate to this. A lot of people in the community, uh, myself included, um, we share that story of, of having immigrant parents immigrating to the United States and you know, chasing that American dream to live a, you know, a better life, provide a better life for their families. And, and our parents always pushed work ethic, right? They always pushed education. And, and for some of them, um, they never had the opportunity to complete school, right? Because they were working, raising families, but they, they pushed this piece of values, morals, and treating people and serving people and treating people right. And, um, you know, I think I think a lot of people have gone on to be successful because of that, right? They've seen how hard their parents work, and and um, their parents don't want to see them struggle like they've struggled, right? But it's a it's a productive struggle. And so you also talked about support systems. You know, going in at U of A. I mean, I don't I don't think I could have done it. I went through Pima first. You know, luckily, you know, I got to play baseball there, and they held my hand a little bit because I had a scholarship, and so I, I had a lot of support there. But if I would have went from like um, you know, Sunnyside High School to the U of A, I think I would have been like lost. It would have been like a third world country, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be <laughs> like, a, what a am shock. I doing it's here? Shock. Culture shock. <laughs> yeah. But um, I love that piece of, of support systems. And I think you, you, find a, you find a sense of belonging, right? And I mean, and, and, I, and that's what it's all about. It's about finding that sense of belonging, believing in yourself um, to be able to pursue the things you want to achieve, right? And so... You know, that's just a, it's, it's, and then, and then when that happens, you know, I think, I think a lot of times a, a lot of people that are successful have good support systems around them. You know, sometimes that's a counselor. You mentioned counselors. It's a teacher, it's an advisor, it's a parent, a friend, and, and, um, somebody that's helped them through those difficult times. 
And when you become successful, you want to do the same thing. You want to go be, be somebody else's support system. You want to go help others because you had that, right? And, and so when you use that word uplift, you want to uplift someone else and, and pay it back, right? Or pay it forward, as, as they say. And so, you know, just what a, what a, what a good story, you know, and, and uh, again, very inspirational. And, and so I, I hope that the listeners, you know, a lot of them can relate to that. And I bet you a lot of them have just different little versions of, of their sto- success stories as well. And so we need to continue to motivate our young students, continue to give them consejos, as they say, right, the advice, and, and, and give them information that they can be successful. They can re- reach that, that uh, success, and, and um, it, all it takes is a plan. It takes a commitment, right, and it takes, you know, making good decisions. And so it's hard to be a teenager. I can only imagine, you know, nowadays when we were teenagers, it was hard <laughs> enough. Now with all these other distractions of social media and phones and this, this, yeah. and that, I mean, it's – it's tough, but you know our our uh, our students are rising to the occasion. I know last year we had a record number of scholarships, and and we were super excited about that. So I want to talk, you know, a little bit about that. You know, going into that's a perfect segue going into scholarships. Um, what opportunities does the foundation provide? And you hit on that a little bit. I think, you know, I know that there's mini grants out there for educators, and a lot of our educators uh, really really appreciate the support, right? In terms of of the of the scholarships and the grants. Um, there's also the dollars for scholars that you guys have taken over. And I believe last year there was 49 students and over $66,000 in yeah. scholarship money. Every little bit helps, yes. you know, and, and we try to tell our students, you know, encourage our students to apply for these because sometimes there are little financial challenges that they reach and, and that extra, you know, thousand to 3000 or $1,500 is, is super helpful. And so, Talk to little talk to us about that piece, and and I want our our parents to hear this. I want our educators to hear this, and I also want our students to hear of these opportunities, so they're not left on the table. Yeah, no, for sure. Thank you. Um, you know, and the dollars for scholars program, you know, that I shared arrived from uh, from alumni from the Sunnyside Alumni Association. A lot of those uh, scholarships are, you know, supported by SUSD staff, um, alumni. They are memorial scholarships to honor loved ones who, you know, made a difference in in the lives of many many folks, not only their families, but. Um, you know, from being educators to students, there's just been so there's so much um, love and support that this community provides. And so the opportunity for for students to apply to these scholarships, we're working really hard on fundraising and and bringing in, you know, new family foundations, um, new donors. There's been a continued um like interest and support to continue to you know recognize and different legacies that are here. Um, for example, um, Larry Martinez now has a scholarship in his name, um, awesome. and and alumni Tanya Viacana helped start that along with all the cross country folks. You know that Absolutely. were touched by Larry yep. and continue Coach to be. Coach Milky has yes, one as well. Coach Milky, and you know um, really want to honor yeah. him in this upcoming um, semester and award ceremony for all the work that he has done and, and care and his ongoing um, support for students. But yeah, we So every student that is graduating from Star to Desert View and Sunnyside High School have an opportunity to apply. And the scholarships actually close here at the end of the month in January. But, you know, we've got, thankfully, like our counselors within, within the district are supporting, helping, you know, them um, create their profile on the Dollars for Scholars um, um, program online platform, and then um, we, you know, match match up the criteria to what the students um, meet, you know, right. in terms of the qualifications. So every scholarship is is uh, could be unique depending on what the donor wants. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Yeah. So if you know, let's say. Um, if if a donor is passionate about STEM field, they can they can say, okay, I want the the recipient to be involved in STEM or have a Absolutely. have an interest in STEM. If if it's cross country, it's a runner. I want them mm-hmm. to be involved in this thing. So you know, as as you heard it, folks. I mean, it it is um, it's it's such a great cause and it's very easy to do. I know I I start I have a scholarship in in my name as well that I I do every year and. Um, 
you know, it, it can be five hundred bucks, can be a thousand bucks. It's up it's to four thousand now. Up to yeah. four thousand now. So all all of you people that have a lot of money and don't know what to do with it, <laughs> yes, invest. <laughs> they in have our the students. feria. You know, come come forward and and invest, invest, yeah. and that you know, you that's a that's a you bring up a great point there. You know, if we want better schools, better communities, we need to invest in our schools and we need to invest in our students, and so. The thing I love about the Sunnyside Foundation, the I'm sorry, the the Dollars for Scholars piece that that event is, it's kind of like a reunion of, of uh, you know the the former retired uh, Sunnyside mm-hmm. al- alumni, um, Sunnyside employees, and so it's neat to see them come out. You know, you don't see them for a couple of years, but every year you see them um, at this event. It's a special event, and and you know they do that because they care about our community. They care about our students, and and um, those those dollars really really help out. So those of you that are looking to to donate, um, how how do they get in contact? Yeah. Do we have a website? Do yeah, we have somewhere where can, they can donate? Yeah, they can they can definitely reach out to us at sunnysidefoundation.org. dot um, org. We they can find our contact information. We take checks. We you know take online donations, and we're happy to. Um, follow up with them and do a phone call to to really match you know what they're hoping um, to to do in terms of support for students um, some of these scholarships are like a family supporting it individual some of them it's a collective you know that folks are all contributing to sure, so there's a lot sure. of different opportunities and some are one-time scholarships and some are other like reoccurring so i think yeah. there's an opportunity to there's a lot it. of flexibility right Definitely. there's a lot of flexibility to work with donors whether they want a one-time whether they want to you know there's a group of people that want to chip in yeah. you can name the scholarship whatever you want um, you know, at the, at the, you know, but at the end, the outcome and, and, and is students benefit from it. Yeah. I do want to share for you. So we, you know, we're, you know, getting ready and for, for fall semester to, you know, the applications are, um, you know, we're open closing, as I said, here in January, but when we, um, went to submit for all the scholarships and, 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 Every, every all of those 49 students enrolled there was no deferment so we're really excited to like share that that's that. huge and then we also got feedback from students and to hear where they're at what they're doing how they struggled how they also like that funding has supported them so yeah i'd love to hear testimonials you know maybe we can make that part of the program where we can have some student testimonials and and how that money has helped them because yeah. like i said you know i, I mean college isn't cheap. I mean, we, we all know that and every little bit helps. I mean, Mm -hmm. the other neat thing about that event, you know, is obviously seeing the people, right? The donors and interacting with them. But the special, the most special piece about the event is that you get to sit with the recipient, you know? So I know when I do my scholarship every year, I get to sit with the recipient. I learn a little bit about the recipient. They have a nice letter for you, thanking you, telling you how helpful this is going to be. You meet their families and just the, 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 you know the the look on their face, the reaction on their face when their child gets called up on the stage and gets their their scholarship is just priceless. You know it's because you, you think about how um, how meaningful it is to parents, right? And then and then sometimes it's just the you you take a little burden off of them, you know, a little stress off of them, knowing that their child has done some great things to earn this, and and that and then the realization that their call their their children are going to college, yeah. and and many of our kids our first generation college going students. And so, you know, they're the, the trailblazers, the trendsetters. And, and I have to say this and I, and I want our families, our teachers to hear this, our students to hear this. All it takes is one person in that family to be successful, set the trend and others will follow. I guarantee it. Others will follow. You get that first child to go to college and, and they're successful the younger kids, the younger cousins will follow. And, and, and those are, that's the type of generation success we need to have in this community. And, and it's happening. It's getting better. Last year, we raised 66,000. I want to challenge the community. I want to, you know, let's get that up to more like 85,000, 100,000. And every little bit helps. And, and uh, I believe it's a tax write-off. Um, again, if you're interested, contact the Sunnyside Foundation. And uh, you know we'll we'll uh, put a, a an email out there, yeah, definitely. And, and uh, or you can contact Ms. Liz Soltero, or or contact our office, and we'll we'll, we'll uh, point you in the right direction. So you know a lot of great things happening. Um, 
I know that you guys are also taking over the the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and um, you know it's something that that is coming. I mean that was yeah. a transition, and and that's coming. That's exciting news because we got we got a lot of individuals that are that are just worthy candidates out Absolutely. there, and so you know we're, we're we're looking forward to that as well. So any any last comments, Miss Soltero? Any last comments out there? I mean, I, I, I'm not going to give you one of those questions like, <laughs> no, "Where do you see yourself in five years? So. What's your most embarrassing moment?" Yeah. I mean, you know, but. I um, I it's just an, it's an honor to get to serve Sunnyside Foundation and work along our team. We have an incredible small and mighty team, board members, and then work alongside the district and community folks there's a lot of people behind our community as we all know and there is um it's it's it just it's it's easier to keep going because there's support you know all around um i would just also say you know last year we stood up our community investment fund and that was uh our third fund so there's education there's emergency relief and then community investment so that is an opportunity to invest in different community initiatives and support and be a fiscal sponsor to, um, you know, we've partnered with Fuga, um, bike, getting bike clubs started, bike fleets. Um, we did some investment in doing murals and cafecitos on generational wealth. And all these things matter because it's like where we live, where we learn outside of the yeah. classroom as well. And um, so it's it's been beautiful to see those connections to the inside and outside the classroom learning opportunities of how we build that sense of you know belonging and, and investment back into our community the small and large ones and so um that's an area we still continue to partner with the district as well and um we're just excited to see where that goes um excited to see you know how we can continue to fundraise and you know, build community. I know the needs, you know, are different and each year there's different gaps that we're trying to work together, but I feel really, you know, I feel really confident about our partnerships and um, we have amazing students and educators. So we just got to find, you know, the resources the, to fill in the gaps. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I know you guys put out a newsletter mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, I know that's put out through our email as well, the Sunnyside uh, district email, uh, that's put out every month and uh you know keep keep um and that's to keep the community involved of what's going on right yeah. and so those of you that have ideas please share them our way and uh you know you guys are doing some amazing things you guys have been a, a, a just an amazing partner you know in terms of working with us and working in our community and i really want to thank you for that because i mean it's it's not always partnerships sometimes can be difficult and be challenging and this one has been super super smooth and the best thing of, of, of it all is our community benefits, our employees benefit, our students are benefiting, and, and we want to we wanna keep that. So students, you heard it here. Those scholarship deadline closes at the end of the month here in January. Make sure to get your applications in for those scholarships. For those of you that are interested in donating, please contact us. Please um, reach out to us. We still have time to make that happen. And uh, I just want to wish everyone a, a happy, prosperous, and healthy 2024. Can you believe that? We're in 2024. <laughs> and so time is going by fast. And, and uh, you know, so we, we, we want to, you know, we want to wish everyone the, the very best. And, and that wraps up this, this episode of Somos Sunnyside. Everybody stay safe and thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Somos Sunnyside. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it entertaining. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to subscribe and share our podcast with La Comunidad. For updates on future episodes and more, be sure to follow us on social media and visit our website at susd12.org. We appreciate your support and can't wait to have you back for the next episode. Hasta la próxima vez en Somos Sunnyside.